Hey folks, Jonathan here. Working on, well, we're not working on a lot. I did get the other grill shell set up there. I like it much better. It's more like the height of the, uh, the cow. So that's the one we'll be running. Even if we got to uh, lean it back some to make it look decent. Anyway, all right. And we're also gonna be moving the body back that little bit of distance there. Nina, what are you doing? Hmm? So uh, that way our engine won't be quite so tight. And we got three packages here. This is all stuff I've ordered. We'll open them up first and then I've got one that uh, I think a subscriber sent. Okay folks, I got the center caps for the wheels. Got my tap, which is a uh, 5 8 18 I think. So this is for the radius rods or hairpin, whatever you want to call. And that is the lug nuts. So that's what we got so far. So we're waiting on the spring, the front end parts. Alright. Okay, so we got one here with no name on it. Well, it's got my name on it, but let me open it up and see what we find. Okay, folks, got a nice letter here from uh, Tracy. No address, but uh, got a horn. And it says, really enjoy your videos. They're inspiring me to get out and be creative on my own. Hope this item can be put to use in one of your many endeavors. P.S. We don't care about the critics. I agree. So... Absolutely. Of course, we'll put this horn on our uh, hot rod pickup truck we're working on, and I like horns. I've actually got quite a few horns. Most of them don't work. i got to go through them and work on them, but uh, this one will go straight onto our truck here. And uh, I've got another one that a subscriber had sent me before, the little short one that i am actually got a place that it's going to go here shortly, too, on another vehicle. So. Anyway, we'll get this on. I appreciate you sending it, and uh, we'll definitely use it. Okay, folks, we've got our pieces cut out for our frame. I'm getting ready to weld them in. But I've got a lot of welding to do inside here first. Uh, get that uh, cross member in really well. Ended up using quarter inch plate because I didn't have any 3 sixteenths, and I didn't want to use 8. So. Uh, decided to go with quarter, so we're going to get that cross member welded in. Welded in good up here. I don't know what's wrong with the rivets here. They're like they're ground off. Somebody ground them off or something. So we're going to weld everything in really well, and we'll let it go with that. Get this box here, and then I'm debating on whether to maybe start swinging the engine in here. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so we've gotten the uh, cross member welded in. And now we're starting to weld our plate in. And we'll get it all buttoned up. Start getting some, some of these holes and stuff that need welded up done. And uh, move on from there. All right, I wanted to show you my cucumber plants that I'm trying to get started. I haven't had a garden in years and uh, enjoy doing it. Just don't have time. Uh, animals around here too, the dogs and stuff, kind of make it rough. What I got. I got cucumbers. That's all I'm growing. It's not all I like. It's just what I really like. I like cucumbers a lot. Uh, it's a good way of getting, you know, water that I don't drink. And uh, so I eat a lot of it, a lot of them. And uh, and I know they're cheap at the grocery store, but you know sometimes you just want to grow your own. So uh, I got six, about six seeds, I think, in each one of these to try to germinate, and then. Uh, we're going to transfer them over into this. This is a big uh, piece off the bottom of a gas tank. So, you know, the guard or whatever. So we're going to see if we can get them to grow here. And I planted them about two days ago. And it rained real bad last night. And one of the seats got uncovered. And I did see that it's germinating. So we're good to go on that. But uh, I'm sure there's a whole lot of farmers and gardeners out there just laughing away at me. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I grew tomato plants one year and messed around and done, uh, I figured I'd plant a bunch of them. That way if I had any dyes, I'd have enough. Ended up with 150 something plants. And we had so many tomatoes, we didn't know what to do with all of them. We gave them to everybody. So uh, we had people coming and picking them and everything else. So that's been a few years back, quite a few years back, but 
anyway i just want some cucumbers every couple videos or maybe every video we'll just check in on this and see how it does and uh everybody can get an update on my my cucumbers and see if they even make it so uh there's some pretty poor dirt around here you about have to uh get some topsoil and build a you know build a bed because all this sand is just terrible but uh this is good topsoil but it's got a lot of a lot of sand in it all right okay folks i got most all this welded up both sides cross member welded in i still gotta do the frame horns and i'll have to do some on bottom when i put the frame over but for now we're good i think what i'm gonna do now is pick this engine up and we'll use the skid steer this time which i'd rather not do but it's the only thing I've got around here right now i'm gonna pick it up and we'll come around beside it and i'm gonna try to lower it down low enough and swing it in sideways and just get us lined up where we need to be and we'll block it or whatever we need to do and then we'll start uh, getting a height and getting some uh, motor mounts made all right noisy machine we did get it in there it wasn't the cleanest prettiest job for sure and we still don't have it back far enough as you can see but we got to trim out the firewall so, so that's the good thing about doing it while the body's on but it's pretty rough to do so anyway I'm gonna trim that out real quick get everything centered up and get it where I want it it's there and it's not like a forklift the skid steer especially turning on this concrete these tires you know they grab pretty good on the concrete they don't like to turn and then the hydraulics on this thing is so touchy uh, this thing's got enough hydraulic uh, gallons per minute to run a backhoe I mean it's just crazy how much uh, how much flow this thing's got but uh, this is a mid 70s machine and I traded a car for this thing with no motor in it. Well, it had a motor, but it was a gas motor and it was all oil pounded. It sits along with the dirt in it and the oil pounded rusted holes in it. And I think I've done a video on it one time before, but I had to extend the machine out back here 
two inches to get the diesel to fit in it. Extended this out. That hole used to be here. That hole used to be here. You know, I just extended it all out. And uh, this has been an excellent machine. I took it over to that uh, the chicken houses, and I really treated this thing rough. I was hammering on it, and this thing, you know, it's not a hydraulic drive. It's belt drive. It's got clutches and uh, like clutch packs on each side. And so far, knock on wood, I've had no issues whatsoever with them. And uh, it's been a really good machine. So anyway, and I actually have a hose blown right now on the Form One bucket, and I can't open it or close it because it'll leak. So until I get a hose on there, just hadn't been anywhere to get a hose. So let's trim this out a little bit. Go back about four inches. See what she looks like. And down a little bit. All right. Okay, folks, there it is sitting in about where I want it. What I've done is I've got the engine sitting on the ground, really, blocked up. And now I can move the frame left and right or forward and back around the engine. And it makes it a lot easier than trying to swing an engine around while it's on a on a hook. That way you can get it exactly where you want it. Now, as for the mounts, uh, I think if you can see them mount right there. Okay, I believe I can take that off and flip it over. And then I can come off the frame here and build a mount. And it's not going to be all the way low enough, but it's going to be close to where I can work with it. And we'll build two frame mounts, one on each side and uh, get the engine exactly level and where we want it. Uh, compared to the other cars, I know some people said something about uh, channeling this over the frame. I don't want it channeled. I don't mind it sitting up high. Uh, I kind of thinking about maybe a hood on this one later and maybe even side panels. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm just going to leave it as what's considered a high boy. That way I don't have to worry about no room inside. I'll probably go ahead and pull them mounts off and flip them over and we'll go ahead and get the engine mounted where it needs to be. You know, it's all got to come back out, but, you know, it's a whole lot easier once you get it all done, you know, to, to take it out and put it back in. It don't take no time. Uh, fan is offset. Something you got to watch out for. Fan is offset over to one side. But that's okay. We can work with that too, but you just got to remember that when you're when you're doing it comes out to the edge so I think it'll be fine and generator alternator mount it's not a problem I think I'm just gonna run an alternator on this one uh, I've got a, a new GM alternator might have changed the front foley and go to a little bit wider foley but we'll see uh, if I happen along another 12 volt generator we'll run it instead but for now that's what we're gonna run and this mount too I can flip it over and that's going to get me, like I said, get me close to where I need to be. I don't have, I don't think I've got, I might have two hockey pucks left. If I've got two left, we'll use two. We'll use something else on the top. We'll just use the hockey puck in between the mount and my plate, whatever I put on there. And uh, I've got to order some more. See where the shifter's going to be. Plenty of room, at, you know, for a seat. Shifter will be right in front of it. Uh, it's going to be roomy. Well, I say it's going to be roomy. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. I mean, you start building and it just seems like everything starts closing in. And uh, cut just a little bit of the floor out. Not much. Just bend it around. You might need to, uh, you never know, you might decide to stick it back in there. Who knows? So, uh, and anyway, you can see what I've done for uh, frame. Just slid it back. And anyway, we'll get it all figured out as we go bodies over that way a little bit that's okay don't have any body mounts done yet you know I wanted to do the engine stuff before I do that so we're getting there okay so we got the mounts turned over and I think this one might be hitting the soil gallery it runs down through here a little bit so I may have to space it out just a little tiny bit which is not an issue now this one comes down and it's just right above the frame so this will be really easy to come out with a piece couple gussets and then uh, you know our, our hole with our our hockey puck in between all right the other side is a little different okay this mount is actually lower and it is lower 
closer to the oil pan. So it's below our frame, which is not an issue when it comes to making the mount. We just need to do it right without uh, screwing up and making them both the level and then the engine be leaning. So we will uh, we'll probably, you know, go by the right here to oil pan height wise and get it right. We've got a cat skin coming up here. Uh, and then I don't like to stay around a lot while I'm welding for probably obvious reasons, but I haven't welded here in a little bit, so she's back to see me. I don't think she likes the fire and the noise, but I am liking it. It's looking good. It's fitting in just like it should. It's starting to fill out everything. Really good. It's not looking like a... It don't look like it's too long now. You know. And I can move the grill shell back some if I need to also. But, uh, but like I said, I may try to get it leveled up to where, you know, if we want to run a hood on it, we can run a hood on it. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, bud? Oh, buddy's getting old. Mm -hmm. Getting old, ain't you, bud? Buddy got in a fight the other day. You can see his nose. What'd you get in a fight for? You're too old to be fighting. Way too old. You need to get you a gun. Yeah, you want to watch yourself? Uh, I'm going to put them right in there and weld them. Same thing here. Okay, folks. So I plan to do a first start on that. The uh, GMC V6 305 cubic inch today. But it rained all morning. And I didn't get started until late. So I didn't do it. But I did get another engine. A buddy of mine brought me this today. And uh, it's supposed to be a good engine. It is a uh, MG66 model. And with a split uh, exhaust. And I've never seen one like that. Okay, so it's got the two Siamese cylinders on one. And the front and rear on the other. And there's uh, dual carbs. Set up. So... He said he thought I might want to maybe build a go-kart or something someday. So, might be good for that. I don't know how many cubic inch it is or cc's. It's probably somewhere around a thousand cc if I was guessing. So, anyway. Alright. Okay, I think in the, tomorrow we get started on this thing. We're going to work on motor mounts. We're going to work on a rear cross member for the transmission. I've got a mount for it. Try to get that on and done. Don't look like we're going to have to go, you know, real much on the, the hump. About like the, uh, the coupe body. So, we'll leave it where it's at. The spring should be here tomorrow. Uh, all the other parts I'm waiting on for the front end. And we'll have to build the, uh, build the bat wing. Bat wings for both sides. Now, the axle will probably end up sitting up here and not where it's at. So it's going to get moved forward and uh, and the reason being is the spring goes in the center and I want the springs going to be just behind the axle a little bit. So anyway, we'll see how it works out. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye. Say bye Nina.